Hello and a very warm welcome to another piece of analysis affecting the gold coin market. What I'm going to be doing on this channel is analysing the historic performance of the gold spot price against a numismatic coin. And for purposes of this video, I will be selecting the 1937 gold sovereign, which is a, a very much a, a numismatic piece. And the reason why I'm doing this video and why I've done this analysis is actually off the back of a YouTube comment on um, one of my previous videos where someone suggested that what I should do is the, the forecast that I give and the advice I give on this channel. Um, wait a year or two and then actually look how that advice panned out, which I thought was an excellent idea. However, I thought actually we don't need to wait a year or two down the line. Let's look at some historic data and uh, see how things have, have panned out. And this, this is basically off the back of uh, a prediction that I made that uh, numismatic coins would outperform the gold spot price. So check out that video if you haven't already for the reasons, the fundamental reasons why I think that will be the case. So this analysis is going to look at the, the auction prices for the 1937 proof gold sovereign, the full sovereign and the half sovereign. So for those that are unfamiliar, the 1937 gold sovereign is a, is a very rare gold sovereign. It's a, a one year type and um, it was only ever produced for pattern purposes. So it was struck by the Royal Mint um, to, to basically uh, show how mass production would occur. But the, the King George at the time, he actually stepped down um, off the throne to marry a, a commoner. And um, for that reason, he only ever appeared on the 1937 sovereign and these sovereigns are numismatic uh, just for people that might not know what a numismatic coin is so a bullion coin would typically trade very close to its intrinsic value so it's very sensitive to the uh, gold spot price whereas a numismatic coin is quite insulated from the gold spot price and it's more its value basically is derived from <clears throat> Um, its age, its condition, which um, which in this case and quite often is its grade, um, uh, and and more to do with the type of coin that it is rather than its actual gold content. So this is the the look of the coin. The reverse of the coin is the standard Georgian dragon that we see on all sovereigns, and obviously the date is 1937. For this purpose, I'm only looking at uh, a PR65, so uh, a proof 65 grade. Um, so originally I wanted to, when I when I thought of numismatic coins, I was thinking of like eight Escudo and I was thinking of British gold guineas. Uh, some of the rarer guineas that feature, um, is it Catherine and some of the, the old um, kings of the past as well. The, the issue that I found is that they didn't appear enough in auctions and when they did, they was nearly always different grades. So I wanted a coin that was a numismatic piece that would feature enough in auctions to get enough data and I needed it to be the same grade so that I'm, I'm comparing like for like and keeping as many variables constant as possible. So the first thing that I'd done was I looked at the auction closing prices or the, the final bid <clears throat> for these coins. <clears throat> uh, I think the, the, the first, uh, the data goes back to 2007 all the way through to current, which is 2023. Uh, what I done was I looked every time that one of these coins sold, I looked at how the gold spot price closed on that day. Uh, and then what I done with as I mentioned, keeping as many variables constant as I could. I looked at how the the performance grew between auctions of the price of these coins and also between auctions, how the gold spot price changed as well to work out if um, the gold spot price had gone up maybe by 8%, how much in that time period had the 1937 coin gone up? And my theory was, that the 1937 would outperform the gold spot price. I didn't really have a bias going into this. Um, I kind of wanted to find a pattern and 
there is kind of a pattern. The pattern sort of surprised me a little bit. It wasn't what I was expecting or hoping. Uh, but um, what we will do is get to the analysis without any further delay, just after this short message. Ornum is a precious metal bullion company based in central London. The company is known for sourcing very rare gold coins, as well as their precious metal market reports, which are published on their website each week. Download the latest market report for free by visiting the Ornum website today. OK, so before I go into the analysis, as I mentioned, I used the same coin. So it was always the same grade, always the same coin and always from the same auction house. If anyone wants to repeat this analysis, the auction house I used was HA.com, which is Heritage, Heritage Auctions. They're one of the biggest, if not the biggest, coin auctioneers um, online uh, from the US. So here we have, first of all, the results of the full sovereign. So you'll see on the right-hand side a graph and this goes back to 2007. So the first auction that I saw was 2007 and it goes all the way through to a recent auction in 2023. The black curve is the 1937 full sovereign performance. So every time that you see one of these blue dots within the, the black curve, that is effectively a new auction, which means that we can compare the price of the auction one and price of auction two and work out percentage wise how much the coin went up or down during the same period i'm doing the same thing with the gold spot price so some of the results that we are seeing on here spot price outperformed for um, the first period which is between 2007 and 2015 it strongly outperformed and let's not forget that 2007 was the eve of the great financial crisis so bullion was in a bull market <clears throat> what looked like the case was that the numismatic coins was not doing as well uh, potentially this might be because um, people were flocking to bullion rather than high premium coins which is quite understandable when uh, when there's a, a financial crisis going on uh, the other thing that we notice is that when the gold spot price fell quite aggressively, so you see from 2015 all the way down to 2017, the <clears throat> between the auction clearing prices or the, the auction dates, the gold spot price was in decline. Uh, percentage wise, it, it lost quite a bit, whereas the numismatic coin was actually quite defensive over the same period. The, there was a loss. Um, however, the loss was... Um, much smaller in, in magnitude than what we saw in the gold spot price. Uh, what you'll notice is if you go look right at the end and the right hand side of the graph or the chart, the performance was actually quite similar for both, even though there was quite wide divergence at times between the performance between of these two assets. Overall, the results were quite similar. So um, the spot price over the period went up by 225 percent whereas numismatic was was slightly uh, less at 219. you might notice that i set so on 2007 i set the price for both of these curves to start at 100. this is something that we do in statistics uh, to to, to um, effectively take out some of the noise because i'm just interested in percentage change for the period i'm not interested in exactly what the gold price was and exactly what the the coin was in 2007 i'm only measuring percentage and, and what we do is we form a basis year and we make that basis year equal to 100 because it allows us to do things like this and see where the percentage movements were were quite significant next we have the results for the half sovereign and what you'll notice straight away is that the the 1937 half sovereign from 2007 all the way through to practically 2018 outperformed bullion so if you would have bought the 1937 proof half sovereign instead of the equivalent value of bullion you would have been better holding over that period which kind of surprised me because i thought that the half sovereign would have just been a mirror image of the the performance of the full sovereign um, but that's not the case uh, what you'll find though is um, 
that the the performance of the half sovereign you can see throughout this period is much more volatile it's a lot more volatile than the spot price uh, and also what we saw on the, the full sovereign as well and during um, some down periods so from uh, from 2018 all the way through to practically 2020 um, the losses were, were quite significant for the half sovereign but then it um, it made up for that I saw some quite strong gains so if you would have bought again if you would have bought um, in 2019 uh, and then held for a couple of years you would have done very well out of holding the half sovereign so the the numismatic piece in this this analysis shows that the the performance pretty much is a uh, it, it it does trend with the the gold bullion price it's a lot more volatile and we saw with the the full sovereign it was more defensive than uh, the gold spot price this is opposite so with the the half sovereign we're actually seeing the opposite of that it's um when the gold price had a downturn the half sovereign lost more of its premium um however as with the the full sovereign the gain over the period was was quite um similar so the spot price went up by 393 percent and the numismatic piece went up by just under 380 percent over the same time period so i hope that you found this interesting and um, please give me some feedback so comment on the videos if there's anything you want me to look at um, i studied uh, degree le level statistics um, a lot of it i can't use on this sort of analysis but I do have an understanding of data and how to use data to, to find out things like what we've talked about on this study. And um, I, I like to put content out there that no one else is really talking about. So I, I watch a lot of the mainstream precious metal channels. They all pretty much repeat the same stuff. You'll hear one person say something and then three other channels do a video talking about the same thing. I try, I try not to do that. I try to invent my own content. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel. I'll try and put these videos out as much as possible, but your feedback is very much appreciated. If there's something you want me to, to analyze, please drop me a message on there. And um, I do look at every comment. Thank you.